Hello, this is Janet Michael. In addition to hosting The Valley today each weekday at noon on the River 95.3, I also produce podcasts, and I'm excited to introduce you to a new podcast series in partnership with Lord Fairfax Community College. Having provided higher education and career training for the past half century, LFCC is tightly interwoven into the fabric of the Northern Shenandoah Valley and Piedmont regions. Join me every week for conversations with current and former students to hear their funny and inspiring stories as we learn about their journey to higher education, the role that LFCC has played, where they are now, and where they plan to go. We'll also talk to current and former professors about their experiences and best memories of LFCC over the past 50 years. Get every single episode as they're released on our website at theriver953.com under the podcast tab, or you can subscribe for free in Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, on Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for LFCC Stories. Hello and welcome to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Tuesday. As you are listening to the show today, it is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County edition, and Justin and I are back together for the first time since the beginning, very beginning of the pandemic. Our last show in person together was at Wilkins Lake when everything was shutting down and we didn't know what was going to happen next. School was shut down. I was walking around with with Amelia and, and we had her on the show and yeah. And yeah. now we are sitting no, at the yes. kitchen table. Yes. I like to keep it fresh. Yes, like well, and, fresh. And, and we're as fresh as fresh is going to get yes. today, I believe. And we are. So where yeah. are we? Tell everybody where we are. Okay, we are at the Peaceful Fields Sanctuary, just about maybe 10 minutes out of town, up 522, just past Winchester Side Works, not far at all past that, with John today. And we, this just came on my radar. What's funny, I've been here for almost six years now, and I am still discovering things on on a regular basis i'm discovering things in my own backyard this this place has been here for eight years so longer than i've been here and two weeks ago it it hit my radar so always things to discover never assume (laughs) that you know everything about your own backyard it's my job to know this stuff and it's still popping up on this stuff new discoveries it's also your job to let me know about these things and i have lived here my entire life okay all right so i have a better excuse than you John Netzo is here with us. He is the president and founder of Peaceful Field Sanctuary. John, tell me a little bit about this place. Paint a picture for the people that are listening. All right. Sure. Happy to. So Peaceful Field Sanctuary is a 501c3 nonprofit charity organization. Our mission focuses on rescuing and saving the lives of farmed animals in need. We rescue all the animals from cruelty, neglect, abuse, and also to prevent their their death and the killing of the animals. They come here to peaceful fields and they spend their entire lives here having a great time, being well looked at, taking care of medically to treat all of their many needs that they have and give them some rehabilitation and give them some love and kindness. What types of animals do you have here? Uh, So with our mission, like I say, we focus on farmed animals. So we have lots of chickens, uh, turkeys, ducks, goats, uh, sheep, equines, horses and donkeys, cattle, and pigs. And also one quail uh, (laughs) and and a cat, too. And a cat, yes. (laughs) Yeah, we're thinking that at some point you may hear the quail in the background. That's right. Was this always a lifelong passion for you? How did the sanctuary come to fruition? Wow, that's that's a great question. And I'll try to keep it as concise as I can because I could probably talk about that for an hour. (laughs) So I grew up and was born and raised on the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. I grew up as a farm kid on a a relatively small family dairy farm. And this was then during the early 80s. And that was actually the very beginnings of a factory farm animal agriculture, CAFOs as, as they technically are called. And I remember one of our neighbors was actually kind of an early stages factory farming. Nowadays, he would probably looked at as a very small farmer, but at that point in time, he was a pretty large operation. I enjoyed living in the country. I enjoyed being around animals and, and caring for them and looking after them and, and having those connections with them. And I have 
been vegan for 17 years. Before that, I was vegetarian. So most of my life of now being 49, I've been either vegetarian or, or vegan for the animals primarily. And there's lots of other great benefits, health, environmental benefits. But for me, it was choosing to do something and not want to directly participate in the animal cruelty that goes on with animal agriculture. And so starting a sanctuary and rescuing animals seemed like a great way to combine those two things together, growing up and appreciating animals. And because I appreciate them wanting to help protect them and, and care for them. I also love the direct aspect of rescue work and directly saving lives. That really speaks to me personally. I've been involved with lots of times in, in, in various different areas as far as, you know, being involved with or organizing protests and demonstrations in DC and with other organizations on in other areas and other topics. And I love that and I love doing public outreach as well and, and educate. But what really speaks to me personally is the directness of, of being involved and making the world a better place. As a Jew, we call it uh, tikkun olam. That's mm -hmm. making the world a better place. I believe that that is an importance and a mission. And I'm just super happy and excited that I found my mission in, the, in my place and why I'm here and I've discovered that. And I'm also blessed to be able to actively to do it. A lot of people, unfortunately, haven't had a chance yet to, to figure those things out. So I'm really happy that I have, and I'm happy to be doing it. And I just love the fact that there's so many wonderful, compassionate people out there that appreciate the work that PFS is doing and want to be involved to, to make it happen. The sanctuary has been around as an official 501c3 and incorporated for eight years. I initially bought this property out here in Frederick County to start the sanctuary. I was working in Northern Virginia, had a, had a nice, you know, pro professional, <laughs> career that what do they that, call that a cushy job right exactly <laughs> yeah it was pretty cushy it paid well and you know kind of just doing my thing and it was always you know gosh one day that will be really nice to to start that work and do that and over time i realized it's always going to be one day unless you actually go out and make it happen and choose that day right so that's then when i decided to Begin working to make it happen, looked at property, found this place that was an old family farm that had been in existence for several generations. The the property and, and some of the buildings, including some of the barns, were built in 1947. Wow. Um, the elderly gen gentleman that I bought the property from, he loved the idea. He wa wasn't quite familiar with, 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 with being vegan and, and the animal rescue side, but he loved the idea that somebody who appreciated the, the history of the area and that I wasn't coming just to like tear everything down. <laughs> right. And he loved the idea that there would be animals once again, farmed animals here once again. Well, let's back up for a second. I'm going to let my uneducation show. Explain to me the difference between vegan, vegetarian, there's... And I always say it wrong. Our former news director, Dylan Nichols, who I love dearly and wish him very much a lot of luck in law school, was a pescatarian. Right. But it used to annoy him when I would say pescamatarian. Because I, and I did that on purpose just to get him to roll his eyes. Explain to me what the differences are between those. Sure. There's many different categories of being vegetarian. Um, a traditional regular vegetarian is going to be somebody who, who doesn't eat meats or any type of animal flesh, but they do consume dairy products okay. of, of all kinds. As a vegan, that's kind of the next step above that. So we choose to remove all animal products and not only from our diet, but com it's also combined in conjunction with lifestyle. So we also choose not to use products that are leather, products that are wool, products that are silk. So we remove anything that is an animal derived product as much obviously as possible from not just from our diet, but from our life. So it's a lifestyle more so than a diet it choice. Is. Right. There, there's the diet component. Um, there's the vegan diet, or some people also call it plant-based diet part, which is going to be completely animal-free as far as the diet. But then the, the, there are the other aspects in the lifestyle. And all that is done together to try to remove and separate yourself as much as you possibly can from directly contributing to animal cruelty and, and also animal ex exploitation. So that's kind of the main difference between 
vegans and then the different levels of I always joke and say I am uh, the diet that involves coffee and chocolate only so I don't know what that's called <laughs> but if all there. I had to eat were coffee and chocolate that's uh, that's the diet that I have well you could easily be vegan and do that you might have some health issues <laughs> Some but, anxiety but, issues. But coffee, coffee, except for that one coffee that comes out of the, oh, end, the tail end of, of the one wild yes. animal. Yes. Yeah. Coffee, yes. other than that coffee, is yeah. going to be vegan. And I will tell you, I have a friend who visited a country and brought me some of that back. Oh, man. I have not done anything with it. It's still in the bag because that's where it's going to stay. Why can't but I think of the name of that? Um, I can't either, but I, I, I just lovingly refer to it as the monkey poop coffee. Yeah, so monkey poop, right? that's... Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's the monkey poop. Um, and it's, even, it's not even a monkey. It's a civet. Yeah. It's related to a civet. It's a cat. Yeah, um, it's actually. Yeah. Like, like, well, um, and, um, well, cat. But people call it monkey yeah. for some reason. Yeah, no, no. I know exactly what yeah. it is. Well, and, it's incredibly and expensive, too. I hate to go to break talking about mon- <laughs> monkey poop, but we're going to go to break. Good break. Good break. <laughs> yes. Good we can gonna, segue off of this We're going to yeah. take a, uh, a quick break. We come back. John, can you tell us about some of the events and maybe give us some of the stories about sure. how that some of these animals have come to be here with you to give people an idea of the really good work that you're doing? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation for Tourism Tuesday. Justin Kearns is sitting at the kitchen table with me, with John Netzel. He is the president and founder of Peaceful Field Sanctuary. We're going to talk more with both of them when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Got a financial decision to make or a goal to reach, but you don't know where to start? You come to the right place. Introducing Quick Money Chats with the Northern Shenandoah Valley Financial Education Program. Visit tinyurl.com backslash quickmoneychat to schedule a virtual chat with a staff member or trained volunteer. We won't tell you what to do, but we will give you the tools you need to choose wisely. And because Virginia Cooperative Extension is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State, your land-grant universities, you can be sure that our information is credible and trustworthy. And you'll know that we aren't trying to sell you something. Maybe you want to improve your credit score or reduce your banking overdraft fees, or even figure out if you can afford to buy that car. Sorting through tons of information on the internet can be overwhelming and sometimes it can be hard to know who to trust. Schedule a quick funny chat and get the information you need to take action. Go to tinyurl.com backslash quick money chat and get financial education personalized for you. Welcome back to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Tuesday. As you are listening to the show today, it is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester Frederick County Edition. Justin Kearns is here with me. We are at Peaceful Field Sanctuary. We are. We we heard turkeys in the background. We're going to talk to uh, Ricky and Fred, I think, before we wrap up today. We're going to get them on mic. Ricky and Fred were a little puffed out. They're your new best friends. They really. I don't know if they like me or they want me to get the heck out of Dodge. I think it was a combination of the two. I think maybe one of them really liked you and the other one didn't like that one of them really liked you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. (laughs) I think think they're a little confused on why you didn't bring them snacks. Right. Ah. Well, and and I'm, I'm glad. Glad that we are transitioning it because I, I think it's I think it's very important. So you know, v- vegan sanctuary. So we've got rescued farm animals here. Mm-hmm. If I had a an egg sandwich this morning, like I'm still allowed to come here. Like I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm so welcome. To, if I'm to come, on that coffee you know. and chocolate diet, but throw a Five Guys burger in every once in a while, I can still come and tour and learn from you, right? Of course, of course. So peaceful field sanctuary with our nonprofit. We are with all our events that are um, available to the public. We are open to everybody and we we love um, our fellow community and and love everybody to come to our events and to visit you are certainly not required to be vegan or vegetarian you're not required to be anything except for i guess alive Um, and polite which sometimes is a stretch these days (laughs) so we do we do have as we are a vegan sanctuary in our bar we do have a vegan policy on site here for us which just simply means that any events and any things that take place here at the sanctuary will be vegan so for example we have a open house that is last sunday <laughs> yes. as, as we're recording yeah, we're this, sitting it's two here days on a friday right. afternoon right. you're having it to this coming sunday people are listening on tuesday so it already happened it just <laughs> happened but the good news is they happen regularly so that's right Anyways, so yes. we have an open house several times a year and those are catered by a vegan restaurant so we have amazing healthy 
and very nutritious and cruelty-free vegan food that's provided. So everything that happens here on site will be vegan. So we won't be doing any meat burger or hot dog cookouts or anything of that nature. No barbecue, um, right. no, but, uh, yeah. But what folks do once once they, they leave the sanctuary, that's, that's, that's up to them. And who knows? I mean, people may come and partake of some of the vegan stuff from the catering thing and think, you know, they will I've be, not ever be considered so this amazed. because I thought it was terrible and they realized it's not so, so... It's so easy now. I remember back when I went vegan, there was nothing... The the only, obviously, other than the produce and, and, and that type of thing. But as far as like specially vegan products or any type of like substitute items, it was just tofu. And you had to go, you had to go to like the... I remember that. Yes. And I hate tofu. So. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan, like, but it's, 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 it's how you prepare, if you prepare it. If you prepare it just right, which involves a lot of work, it's really good. I've most people that, don't, don't I've like to do that. It's a lot. Yeah. If it takes more energy to fix it than it does to right. eat it, I am not right. eating it. Right. And you had to go to like to the little like hippie natural health food store to, to buy the tofu uh, nowadays now you can go to walmart right. and you can buy all this prepared food you can buy vegan pizzas at, at walmart mm-hmm. i <laughs> literally bought some there yesterday so i know this for a fact <laughs> then as far as restaurants and, and other vegan businesses it's growing out in this area huge we've got some in the region but none in winchester yet so yeah, yeah i don't know to this. yeah there is somebody a somebody in winchester please please <laughs> open an all vegan restaurant because Martinsburg has several. Charlestown has one that's about to open, which is going to be a vegan Puerto Rican restaurant. And so they have amazing food, and that's going to be fantastic. Berkeley Springs. Harper's Ferry has an all-vegan restaurant. (laughs) Come on, Winchester. There's like 75 people that live there. The greatest greatest town in Virginia. Come on now. Uh, So let's switch gears for a second and talk about the rescue aspect of the sanctuary because that's a really big deal as well. You are saving these animals and giving them freedom for the rest of their natural lives. And and so how do they get here? So you're not a surrender farm, so that's important to... I can't bring you my backyard chickens that went terribly wrong and say here take these no we do so that's a great point so with our mission we do focus on rescue work so because of that we generally don't get involved with that situation which we term as an owner surrender where it's somebody who has an animal and for whatever reason they no longer wish to to care for them we generally don't get involved with the owner surrenders most of our animals um again they're all going to be rescues and they're almost always going to be rescued straight out of animal agriculture slash factory farming and also cases of cruelty, neglect, and abuse. So they typically come to you after, say, authorities have been called in or a humane society has been called in or someone else has been called in to identify, verify, and now they need placement. So besides working directly with concerned citizens in the public, Peaceful Field Sanctuary is a part of Frederick County and the state of Virginia's emergency response team, where we will be called on by the county and or the state to respond with them when they're going and getting involved with potential cases of cruelty, neglect, and abuse. So that would be when there has been a case that's developed and the county or the state goes in to seize animals and place criminal charges against individuals. So we partner with them. Some of the things that we can do when we partner with that, we can help assess and kind of triage the health and the condition of the animals. And we can help transport the animals off the location to find them a temporary home and a place to be looked after and cared for, receive medical attention. That sometimes can also be here, take place here at Peaceful Field Sanctuary in addition to other locations. And after the court proceedings, if then the charges have been filed and they've been found guilty of those charges. Then at that point in time, the animals become under the legal protection and care of the county and or the state of Virginia. So then at that point, we partner with them to help find permanent homes for the for the farmed animals. And again, that can be here at Peaceful Field Sanctuary. It can be also at at other places. And we did part of that. And some folks might be aware of our involvement and our assistance with the various counties in the state of Virginia in the in the um, closing of Wilson Zoo in in Winchester under animal cruelty. Mm-hmm. So we partnered um, with them and helped with that and participated in the in the court hearing, which was a very unique. That was that was my first time directly being involved with a court court case for cruelty and, and animal. Did any of the animals of end up here or? So unfortunately, none of the animals ended up here. We we did partner and help to find an animal's home. One of the issues and one of the things that we want to uh, eventually at some point in time uh, make it part of our mission to address is there's a disc- discrepancy legally as far as in the state of Virginia and the treatment 
uh, farmed animals, which are considered and called legally livestock, mm-hmm. compared to companion animals, which can be pets, cats, and dogs, and even exotics. So in the state of Virginia, exotics have the same legal protections as companion animals. And that is awesome. That's amazing. So one, one area, for, as an example, will be access to drinking water. So exotics, just like your cat or dog, have to have 24-7 access to potable water. So that's basically the water that comes out of your tap in your home, clean, nice, safe drinking water. So they have to have access and that provided 24-7. If they don't, technically in the state of Virginia, that is... An abusive situation. That's an abusive situation, and you can be charged for that, and the animals can be removed from your care. And both companion animals and exotics enjoy that. If they are a farm animal, what they would call it in livestock, so just the only difference is a change in species, so not a, not a dog. Not a not, tiger. Not, not a tiger or a zebra. <laughs> not, now, now the individual is a goat they don't have that protection at all so they can be denied access to water they can have really horrible water that nobody would even get near and legally it takes much more than that before any type of it's a lot more difficult and complicated to be able to do so anything there's for this, that. this discrepancy that that from our view is incredibly unfair because literally the only difference is designation yeah the, the, the breed, of, breed of the animal so at some point in time we would love especially to partner with with other groups that do a lot of legal and, and lobby work and we would love to at some point in time to get that change and kind of close that loop in this in the state of virginia um well we've got to wrap up but i don't want to do that until you tell us yes. where you are mm-hmm. how people can get more information how they can help support what you're doing here so start with yep. where are you where are we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Peaceful Field Sanctuary, we're located here in Frederick County, Virginia. We're not far outside of Winchester. We're just northwest of town off of 522, like if you're going to be heading out to Berkeley Springs. We don't have public daily business hours, and that's primarily because of both the busy work in providing care for the animals, many who are special needs, and many who have a lot of medical issues to be addressed, and who have also suffered a, a lot of trauma. So between all the work that's involved with, with us, the staff, and also the volunteers, busy caring for the animals. A lot of the animals also have suffered a lot of major emotional trauma because of the cruelty they've seen. So rightfully so, a lot of them are not very trusting of of humans because of their previous and past life experience. And being exposed too much to people because of that then can kind of trigger that emotional trauma. trauma. Yeah. 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 So for those reasons, we don't have business hours, but we do host several events every month at a minimum we will have a public volunteer day that's where anybody can come out zero experience and vault spend the day volunteering with us that also serves as an orientation for the folks that want to get more involved and volunteer on a recurring basis um, what's the age limit on that if somebody has a teenager and they're like go shovel some so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you for stopping there so, so i don't have to edit so that a, out uh, for a volunteer you need to be at least 12 and okay. anybody um, under the age of 18 needs to have a parent or guardian here okay. with them gotcha. as they as they volunteer. Okay. Yeah, great question. Okay. If somebody that works best with their schedule to come out once a month and do those days, we have lots of volunteers who come out on a weekly basis, several days a week to, to give back and volunteer their time for the animals. This work can't happen without our volunteers. You can't do it all. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, so our mission is only possible as everybody working together as a community, as a team, and that can be, for some, that could be, you know, volunteering of their time and their muscles, and it saves them on gym membership, too. Right. <laughs> In case anybody uh, wants to cut their costs, workout, yeah. let me tell you, yeah, it's great exercise, being, being outdoors, being around the animals. What about food? Could I donate... Hey, hey, yeah, I was thinking ever. turkey food, yeah. but I don't know what turkey sure. is. <laughs> um, we, we can, and, and if, if folks have items that they want to deliver, we, we can definitely uh, like talk about that. Call, call us, yeah, okay. you bet towels, towels or, or email us. We also have a active wish list on Amazon of items, and people can oh, you do? Okay. purchase those um, while they're shopping on Amazon. And so then they'll just put them in their cart like with everything else. And instead of shipping it to them, Amazon said we'll ship it straight here to yep. the sanctuary for the animals. And so a lot of people like to do that. And that's helpful. And from anything, there's, for example, like Lowe's or Tractor Supply gift cards. We frequent those places a lot. And, and other items like 
a lot of people like to give items that way. And then as far as hay and feed, and of course our biggest expense is medical because everybody mm, sees, right. sees gets veterinary care. Um, that includes all the the chickens and and <laughs> one vet visit, even just a, like a basic checkup, you know, is going to be you know about three hundred dollars. Oh, let me tell you, I got these two dogs in October, yeah. and that is way <laughs> right. more than what I ever anticipated sure. it to be. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the birds, because of the extreme breeding, they have a lot of physical issues that need treatment. So a lot of people are surprised to learn, because we get asked all the time, as far as like the cost of care, who's, who's the most expensive? And it's not even close. It's the birds, the chickens, turkeys, and ducks. So you'd think um, it would be the larger well, animals, right. the, horses, the horses, the cattle, exactly, the goats. Yeah. yeah. Folks would, would almost always tend to think, especially equine, horses, yeah. the horses and donkeys, not even, wow. not even close. They, they they are expensive to care for properly. Don't get me wrong. But the it's, the, it's the oh, birds the by far because they have so many issues. Because, for example, with the birds from the egg side of things, with, with the, the egg farms. So it's an animal that they're like wild relatives like all other birds on the planet lay one or two clutches of eggs or even less a year to reproduce. And that's it. And humans have taken that and through breeding and basically turn them into a living factory farm to crank out an egg every other day. So hens have a relatively short lifespan and their cause of death is almost always reproductive failure of various forms. Okay. Now on your website, can people find your phone number, volunteer sure. information, the Amazon link? Events. What is your yeah. web address? Yeah, so you can find all that information on our website, which is peacefulfieldssanctuary.org. A lot of it is also on our Facebook page, especially our events. We, we publish and have all our yeah, events. You've got a really good Facebook page. Thank you. Yeah. On our yeah. Facebook page. We're also on Instagram. Uh, we do Twitter once in a while. <laughs> still never really... <laughs> personally been yeah. able to like figure out what, too, uh, okay. what the usage yeah. of, of that I'll is. explain Twitter to you. Twitter is my social is media oh, network okay. of choice. But, yes. uh, but Instagram and Facebook. We're also on Patreon. So we use Patreon as a great means for folks who want to give on a reoccurring on a monthly. Yeah, they want to set it up that 50, 60, donation. $150 a right. month, they just want to donate yeah. to you. Yeah, and so we have, we have a lot of kind of folks who support our work financially to take care of all these medical and the feed expenses and, and, and everything else through PayPal and other means. We really like Patreon and, and, and so do our supporters because in addition to, to the public being able to make that awesome commitment, whatever it might be, a dollar a month, $20 a month, $500 a month, that we are able to provide them a lot of really neat special content. Yeah, you get bonus stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. depending on what level you give, exactly. you get cool right. so things. We, so we, give, uh, we like to share a lot of like insider information. So when there's a new rescue, our, our patrons know about it first before ah, anybody nice. else on Facebook. Nice. They also get a little bit more insiders look like as far as the behind the scenes, the sanctuary life type stuff. What it takes to care yeah, for. Care for animals, no pictures of Ellie the pig in the morning before she's had her breakfast, though, because right. she's just not that <laughs> kind of girl. Uh, no, the, the patrons <laughs> also get, get that, that's the type of access they get. <laughs> Everything. So sure. if somebody wants to come out and visit, mm -hmm. regular opportunities, open houses days, if you have like a special group or a school group or something like that, contact you, email you, and see Yeah, if you an bet. So okay. um, we are open both to doing private events. So we have okay. done, we've done weddings here. We've done bachelorette party other private groups we're happy to coordinate and set those up and talk with folks about those and what would be involved we love also partnering with schools both here and we also go off-site to schools kids summer okay. camps to oh, nice. other off-site okay. events veg fest coming up soon we're going to be visiting the humane society just down down the road a little bit in Front Royal, they're having an event there in early August, and they're gonna have be open to the public. There's gonna be a lot of kids there. Toby the goat, the special needs goat, is going. Okay. With their request, so we, we we're happy to go to offsite events, and we're happy to coordinate and have have groups. groups Lots of here opportunities from, to from engage. Right. Any yeah. any any and all all types. So if you have an interest in wanting to do anything special like that definitely reach out to us and we'll be happy Fantastic. to coordinate with you. Let's wrap up. Before we do, Justin, you want to walk outside and say goodbye to your two friends and see if yeah, we can possibly get them to say goodbye to us on mic? Yeah, sure. Let's I, go. Yeah. We're going to go see if the turkeys will talk to see us. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> it is the Valley Business Today with Top of Virginia Regional Chamber. So meet me back here for that show just a few minutes after noon. <laughs>